Hello everyone, this is Jerry Papali. Welcome to day 19 of Lent and also day 19 of building and sustaining ministry leaders through Christ Jesus. So, so we, during this time of Lent, we're just focusing on improving our walk with God, getting closer to Him through reading His Word, praying and fasting, and doing the things that the things of God that we, we must do in order to hear His voice um, and also to, to be guided by the Holy Spirit and to be better people in, in the community, in our family, and wherever we go, we, we want to represent Jesus well and represent God well. So today, um, the leadership traits we've been talking over the last um, 19 days, 18 days, um, it's to help us with our daily living, to help us to apply God's word when, we, when we're you know, dealing with people, when we're dealing with um, with situations and circumstances that are difficult. You know, we have the Word of God to help us through and the Holy Spirit to teach us all things, to help us in our daily walk with God, being confident in God's Word, and also remembering who we are in Christ. So today, we're gonna continue on with uh, with uh, another leadership trait. But before we do that, um, I just wanted to do my due diligence and talk about the coronavirus and, and the dangers of it. Um, and I have a coronavirus action plan, which has four steps or four elements. It's just to to keep us aware and what to do during this time of, of uh, panic and and during this time of um, daunting you know, situation with this disease. So number one is be aware of the facts of the virus. Do not react to rumors or fear mongering. Emphasize and practice good hygiene habits. Number two is postpone your travel to international areas and areas with high infection rates. And three, be aware of those who may be showing symptoms. Um, I encourage you who's coughing, you know, if you have a temperature, you're having breathing problems, to stay home. And if it continues, please see a doctor, okay? And there are certain things that we can follow. So follow these sensible practices regarding personal hygiene. Wash your hands frequently. Avoid touching your eyes, your nose, and your mouth. Practice respiratory hygiene. So if you're coughing, you know, cover your mouth. You know, this means covering your mouth and your nose. And with your bent elbow or tissue, you know, cover up. And then dispose of the tissue immediately. If you have a fever, a cough, or difficulty breathing, seek medical care early. And finally, trust, be wise, and not fear. One of my favorite verses is Exodus 23, chapter 23, verse 25. Serve and worship the Lord your God, and He will bless your bread and your water and remove sickness from your midst. <clears throat> so one of the highest priorities right now is to stay balanced in the midst of this fallen world. And, you know, we're in the midst of all these sicknesses and diseases, but we, we have to exist in this world. We live here. So instead of running away, we must run into it with the power and the promises of Jesus Christ. We must re remain vigilant, stay current with the changing conditions around us in Hawaii. So I just wanted to, to, to bring that out because we're going through a situation with the coronavirus, not only here in Hawaii, but um, in the nation and worldwide. So those are practical um, things that we can do to prevent the spread of it. Okay, thank you very much for listening to that. So today's word is generosity. <clears throat> so generosity and, and generosity is giving. Generosity is giving of your heart, giving of your time, giving of your resources to a vision or to something that you believe in. So generosity as a leader, um, in order to in order to to keep your followers. In, within the, the vision of your, your uh, ministry, it's good to be generous, to show good generosity, because that'll show them that you care. You know, it's not so much what you know, but showing that you care along with what you know. So, so the thing that I'm focusing on today is, is sowing, because sowing means to plant or to scatter, or to, to sow, scatter, seed. And that shows generosity. So in the Bible, in the New Testament, from uh, the Greek word spiro, 
or spiral means to scatter, to sow, to receive seed. So I'm looking here at Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, the King James Version. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whoso whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth of the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap everlasting. So that is saying that whatsoever a man sows, again, sow to sow, to plant, to scatter, whatsoever we as man sow, whatsoever we plant, that is what we will reap. Whatever we put into something, we will also reap the, the benefits or the rewards of it. So if you sow into sin, you're going to reap death. If you sow into the spirit, you will reap life. So those are the, that's the principle of this scripture. Okay, so 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, also King James Version. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. So following that same um, principle. So if you reap small, you're going to, you know, if you sow small or sparingly, that you're going to reap the same thing. So whatever you put into something, if you put big time, you're going to get big time rewards and benefits. But if you if you have heartedly sow into into something, you're going to reap that. You know, half heart. You're going to reap half hearted um, rewards or harvest. So whatever we put into something is what we're going to get out. Basically, is what this scripture is about. So whatever you sow is what you reap. And that's a Bible principle. And everybody knows that. That if they put their whole heart into something, they know they're going to get something out of it. And that's the principle of the Bible that um, is very powerful. And, and if a leader can get can grasp that principle of sowing and reaping, he's going to benefit. So when it comes to generosity, true generosity from a leader shows that he cares about his followers well-being and then it shows that he he has unselfish motives and and when when a leader does that he he um he gets loyalty and, and uh, from his team members and his followers and also the morale of his team is very high so so a leader's caring actions attract followers as well as the knowledge and the wisdom a leader has and provides so all leaders can develop greater generosity. So it's a it's something that we can develop because it's a mindset, and it's also comes from a leader that's content, that knows that is confident, that knows who he or she is in Christ. So when you have that kind of heart and you have that mindset, it can be developed. And and I believe and I know that if you develop it while reading God's word. You know, renewing your mind into the things of God. God will transform your heart, your mind, and it will become part of you. Like being generous, it, it'll be simple. It'll be part of you. It'll be part of your personality. So it's a mindset. Giving is a mindset. And, and it comes from a heart that's content with Jesus, knowing who he or she is in Christ. And also it comes from a grateful heart because knowing that you're so grateful of your followers, of your team that's come together, you know, you know, pursuing, you know, and seizing the, the ministry goals and vision. So it comes from a grateful heart and, and a leader that appreciates his, his or her followers. And and leaders know that ministry leaders know and great leaders know that having resources is a gift, and it's a tool that is that can be used for the kingdom purposes, for God's purpose for that ministry okay. great generous leaders value people so great leaders uh, value people like one of the traits that we've already covered is servant leadership so a servant leader is someone that values his or her followers and actually puts them first you know as a servant of God in the Bible Jesus said that if you want to be a leader, you got to be last and you got to serve. <clears throat> so we know as leaders that we have to place our followers first. And that's the, the, the definition of servant leadership. 
And we know as well that value, the value of money is its ability to advance a greater mission and vision. So also we talked about vision. Whenever God places a vision into our hearts, it's always bigger and greater than us because it's, it's, it's impossible to accomplish anything without God's help, without God's resources and God's wisdom and also God's guidance. So the value of money is, is its ability to advance a greater mission or vision. So a vision that's better or greater than us, bigger than us, that it will draw people to the Lord in order to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. And also leaders develop generosity through consistency. So in order to, to be a generous leader, you gotta practice that. It has to be part of you. So giving of your tithes, your offerings, and you know, you develop ways to give, to give back. It may not always be in money, but it'll be in your time and your resources and your knowledge and sharing and imparting that knowledge to your followers. So the greatest action is to do something for someone who you know you can, can never repay you. That's another level of giving. That's another level of generosity. And the highest level of living is giving. So that concludes today's uh, teaching on generosity. So it's an important trait because it comes from a heart that's content, a mindset that's renewed to the Word of God, and it also comes from a grateful heart. A grateful heart that appreciates his followers, uh, his or her members. And, 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 and because of that vision, they've come together to accomplish the vision in this ministry that you're part of. So giving and generosity can be developed from a mindset that's renewed to the Word of God and from a heart that's content because they know who they are in Christ and also from a, a heart that's grateful, grateful for his or her salvation, grateful for the opportunity to serve God. So thank you very much. Again, I'm a life coach. Also, I, I give trainings. That's the services I provide. So if you need those services, hit me up, jerrypopali at yahoo.com. Thank you very much.